So this time on Hack 5, a Web 2.0 mashup with Yahoo Pipes. A Windows PowerShell GUI. Helix, the open source forensic distribution. Plus a ton of hack snacks to get your grub on. Snucky, snucky. Mm. Good stuff. <laughs> yeah, this time. We're done. Watch the show. That was it. <laughs> done. Bingo. What? That was it, man. <laughs>
Right. So yeah. what I want to do here is view the source, and that's great. You can view the source of everybody's p uh, pipes, and you can see I've got a input here, okay. and the output of that goes to a URL builder that uh, looks through the uh, so mini So search RSS. this and then look for a specific uh, yeah. query. Yeah, and you really you just kind of play around with these. You, you click into them, and when you click these boxes here at the bottom here, what happens is you get this, uh, this neat little um, uh, debug uh, window that allows you to take a look at... You can at look at the code. Exactly. You, well, you, this is what the output looks like oh, from each of these modules. Oh, that's once it processes it. Okay. Right. So we can look at the output of this module. It's, you know, if, if the series name was Heroes, that's what it would look like. And then you know, we click into here, and we can see what all of these look like until finally we have it looking like what we want it to, and that's the output here of the latest episodes of Heroes, if that's what you were searching and for. And obviously, we yeah. don't download these things. No, no, I mean, obviously, uh, some, you know, somebody's pipe user on, uh, discretion yeah. when it comes to copyright infringement, yes. but... Uh, but yeah, so so what I uh, started looking for was a way that I could take, rather than just the latest fee, the latest uh, blog post from Darren and the latest blog post from you. So you didn't have a sep so there wasn't a separate section for each person. That yeah. way it would get kind of complicated that way and yeah. probably take up too much space. I just wanted the latest from my okay. group of friends. So I really just used this union operator here, okay, and then into that I plugged in a whole bunch of feeds. Okay. Okay. So the real simple one is um, is your feed right here. So oh, there's my I pop in this operator here that just I just enter in the name Chris and I give it your feed. I use this operator to truncate it. I put it in the union, and then from there I just use a sort to make it so that the most recent items are first. So let's go ahead and add one. So I've got a blog here that's uh, snubsy.com. It's uh, and if I click the RSS for that and I can copy that feed, I'll go back to my um, so when you create a new one, are there, are there templates you already have? Uh, looks like my pipes down here. You already have your own uh, sets of them. Uh, do you, did right. you create this yourself? No. Well, uh, what happens is all of those p uh, pipes that are in the directory, mm -hmm. you can use within your own pipe. Oh, I can. So I they're kind of like functions in programming language, mm -hmm. so or classes. Like your own little library of... Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So one of them was this add feed with label. Okay. And I'm going to drag that in here. You see, the normal sources one that comes with it is just... It just gets the feed URL and it doesn't do anything to yeah, it. Yeah, it's just, just called fetch feed. You give it the URL, but you can't give it a name. So for this one, I used somebody else's feed, which used uh, regex expression, and uh, it's a little d redundant, but uh, just used that and then a couple other operators that allowed them to add a name mm -hmm. to the prefix of uh, And that way you, you could title. tell that you were reading somebody else's yeah. blog. So uh, for this, I'll give it a feed name snubs and give it the URL to that feed. and. The next thing I want to do here is just truncate it, right? So because we don't want to pull the entire front page of the site, we just yeah. want a couple of them. So I just want the first uh, two. So for that, I'll go down to operators. I'll There's pull quite in, a lot of them there. Yeah, I'm pull in a truncate. Do. I'll drag the output of that to the mm -hmm. input of this. And then the out okay, and then you would do two. two, and then drag the output of that these into little your squid -like union. Things, to my union, and, and there we your, go. And your union pumps out all the stuff. Right yeah. to your right when to I the click page on my union, to to. when I click on my union and look at my debugger, it's got a preview of what they would look like before it goes to the next one, which is my truncate, and then a instead of having my to, source, instead of having to sort. save it and refresh and, and yeah. go back and forth between yeah. the windows. And this doesn't require yeah. Flash or Silverlight or Air or any of that crazy stuff. This is all just done with JavaScript. Just JavaScript. Yeah. So, so if you have no, so I have to enable my NoScript. Uh, of course. Yeah. yeah. But it's as simple as that, and there are so many more. Uh, pipes to browse through the directory and get some ideas of fun things that you can do, whether it be geotagging Flickr pictures on a Yahoo map mm -hmm. or just combining your friends. Pretty much any logs. content that, that exists in some kind of feed form, you can just you pull it and do whatever you want with it. Yeah, it's a fun little mashup tool. That's really that doesn't cool. require programming experience. Oh. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, where can we uh, find more of uh, your work, Darren? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, there's this podcast. Yeah, I don't know. I've, I've, uh, I've seen it before. Well, I've started <laughs> blogging again at DarrenKitchen.net. Okay. Yeah, I've seen you revive that. Yeah, and um, yeah, I was able to recover my WordPress database from 2005. So, okay. yeah. Well, that's really cool. And other than that, you just find the show notes for this yeah. at uh, hack5.org. That's the place. Have you ever wanted to check the strength of your passwords online? There's a lot of sites out there that do that for you, and one is called PasswordMeter.com. I like it especially because it actually grades you on the passwords that you put in there, plus or minus points, uh, for different requirements. 
So I have a password in my clipboard here that I'm going to paste in. And there it is. And it says I'm very strong. I score 100%. Uh, I get a uh, plus 56 for the amount of characters. And it looked like minus 8 for consecutive lowercase characters. So you want to watch that uh, when you type in passwords. You don't want to repeat characters. Um, for more tips like this, forums.hack5.org. So for the longest time, administrating Windows has been like trying to give Bomber a sponge bath. Not so much fun, with all the gooey and the clicking around. But then, with the Longhorn days, they came up with this cool new magical thing called Monad. We now know it as PowerShell. It's finally like a Unix way to actually interact with the operating system without the clicky-clicky and typey-typey instead. And Well, Matt, thanks for coming down to no show problem. us how to turn the typey-typey into the clicky-clicky. Yeah, the typey-typey is really nice because it's extremely powerful. And with a lot of these new manufacturers realizing that you know, with the release of Windows Server 2008 and with Vista, you know, the, the PowerShell, which is, it, as it's now called, is a reality. It's, mm -hmm. it, you know, not that it's forced on you. You don't need to download it if you have Windows XP or anything like that. But it is a free download for you to test and play with. So for anybody that's not really familiar with it, basically PowerShell is to Windows as Bash is to Linux. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, now, in PowerShell itself, um, there's a lot of, if you're setting up Exchange, if you're setting up uh, Office Communication Server, a lot of the uh, Microsoft specific uh, servers, they require a lot of PowerShell commands to actually get working. Um, it's a little confusing at first because you need to know what the millions of different options are. Sure, just like any command line interface to very begin right. with, whether it be DOS, you know, uh, TCL, whatever. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, as an example here, um, what I'm going to show you guys is a GUI uh, front end for the PowerShell. However, uh, a GUI in a manner of it will actually help you learn the commands that you want to run. So we're not taking two steps forward and then another step back. Right, exactly. So we're not going from GUI to command line to GUI and then forgetting about the command line again. If you want, you can do all the administration from the GUI, but it's also going to show you how to actually use PowerShell. Um, so PowerShell in itself looks pretty much just like a regular C colon backslash blinky blinky command prompt. I love However, it. we do have the PS precursor. Ah, I see. So it stands for PowerShell means, hey, you're in the PowerShell, don't dick anything up. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go ahead and type uh, get-service. And we're going to use service as an example here because we don't have uh, an AD, an Active Directory domain, in the house. Uh, so what we're going to do is just use commands that we can pull from the local machine here. Uh, that we've got. As an example, so services, an example. which is our, our uh, all local machines, right. but this, the same principles then apply to whether it's Active Directory Administration or IIS or right. you know, whatever. Now, there are, there are some plugins that you're going to need if you're going to do like enterprise-wide uh, management, but those are all available uh, from the website. So we're going to do a, a service list. We're going to get all the services that we've got. And in its standard state, you might as well just have opened up you know, the, uh, the MMC for the services. Yeah. Um, you know, shows us w what's running, the actual uh, service, and then its description. Now, what we can do actually in here, this is Power GUI. This is the PowerShell front end uh, provided by Quest Software. It is free, even though Quest like charges in inordinate amounts of money for their software. This one happens to be free. Um, so what we can do here is get a list of current running services. We're going to go ahead and refresh, and it's actually going to show us uh, basically just what you would see in the standard MMC services snap-in. Now, that being said, we can then go in here and see what it actually ran to get those results. So this is much like if you're familiar with something like Dreamweaver or uh, Microsoft Front Page. You've got the one tab that's like your fun little design GUI, drag crap around, and then your other tab being here's the actual code that made that happen. Right, exactly. So basically what we did is we ran get-service. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now while it did you know, for each loop, we just listed them all out. Sure. Um, the nice thing about this is uh, a lot of us, you know, when we're on a server or something like that, we'd like to see what's running, you know, say we want to know if a service is up and running, if it was supposed to start automatically but hasn't. Mm -hmm. Sometimes going through that list and sorting and, you know, all that happy horse s. It's a common thing when you boot up a server, something's not running, what's the first thing you check? Services, 
what's set to automatic, and of those automatic ones, which ones aren't started? Right, exactly. Yeah. So here, we can actually go back to the UI tab. And automate this somehow? We can create a filter that we're going to say, okay, the property that I want is I want the current status equals stopped. Okay? I want the property of startup, oh, startup type to equal auto. And then what it's going to do is we're going to go ahead and hit apply. And oh, look at that. The security center is stopped, but it's set to start auto. automatically. Sure. And print spooler. Well, here we can actually select this mm -hmm. without having to go into the services snap in and actually start the uh, the service. Great. Gives you a bunch of options. You know, what do you what do you want to do? And we just hit OK, and it should start it. And now that's left over is the security service. Exactly. So after we've done all that, we can go back and see what actually it ran to start the service. So now we have some code that corresponds with what the filter that we just made. So now we can copy that, make a, what is it, a CMD file or a batch file type dealie? Um, I'm not exactly sure what, uh, what scripts, I mean you can run PowerShell scripts in a CMD or you know, a .bat, I believe, as, you know, it, as long as you invoke the PowerShell first. Sure. They're not going to run on a basic. Just system. like you would invoke a WMI script. Right, exactly. So, from there, you know, you, you can you know dice, decipher it, you can dissect it, you know, it, Start whatever. Start tweaking it exactly. once you. Exactly. Yeah. Sounds um, like a great way to get familiar with this kind of stuff. The 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 current Snap-ins uh, plugins that are available right now are for Active Directory, for Exchange 2007 management, mm -hmm. um, and a couple other um, uh, basic applications. Right now, as far as PowerShell integration is concerned. VMware is working on a plugin for PowerShell so you can manage virtual machines from the PowerShell, scripting. I know, I, I think there's like a, a list of over 250 big time corporations that are actually creating scripts for the PowerShell so that you can automate all these. Sounds the, like the Windows tasks. will finally get the power that Unix has had for years. I know, and, and, and it's, it's about time. I mean, yeah. that, that's always been, uh, as system administrators, our biggest complaint. Um, but now, I mean, you've got you know, the power of the PowerShell and a GUI, now mm -hmm. maybe not replace all the functionality. Of course. Well, I mean, if you're going to do these tasks uh, on your Active Directory or on your local machines anyway with a GUI, you might as well use this GUI so that you're at least learning some stuff that you can then apply in the future. Uh, sounds like a lot easier than just jumping in head first and learning commands. Yeah, yeah. It, which is never fun. No. You know, so More this fun way, to learn by example. Right, exactly. And the other thing is, on, on your right pane really quick, it's got a bunch of actions that are common for whatever plugin you're using, whether it be local, AD, whatever. So you don't have to go hunting for those, you know, mm -hmm. hidden commands that right. are you so hard to find. You usually. could use this in the device manager. You could use this right. in local users and groups. Exactly, and, and you can add items as as many as you want. You know, common actions. It really is a nice piece of software, especially for being free. Especially for when it comes to automating. Yes. That kind of stuff that. Uh, that not necessarily replacing the administrator, but making his life a lot easier. Right, exactly. That's what I, that's, and then you'd have more time for beer. More beer time, less work time. Love it. Thanks so much. Where can people find more of your work? Uh, they can find it at Hack5. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Along with the show notes and all that other fun stuff. Exactly. Oh, yeah. All right, dude. Thanks, man. No problem. All right, Darren, so what was last month's trivia question? Last month's trivia question was, bow to my firewall. Uh, who was it? Where was it? What was going on? And uh, who got it right? It was correctly answered by Dids. And uh, he writes, bow to my firewall was made by the Shmoo Group as an advertisement for ShmooCon 2006. Very nice. Congratulations, Did. And uh, it's a fun video. You just, you yeah. got to check it out. That's pretty much... The gist of it, go in Google, got on my firewall, and you can't go wrong. It was a difficult trivia question, I know. <laughs> Hence the thousands of uh, responses. <laughs> oh, I got this one. <laughs> yeah, and the guy that keeps answering about the freeze pop thing from like, a couple episodes ago, <laughs> we got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this month. <laughs> so this month's trivia question is a toughie uh, to make up for last month's trivia question. Uh, this month's trivia question on an Apple IIc. 
what was the chip directly behind the video port on the main board of the Apple IIc. If you get it right, uh, I will buy you a shirt and uh, send it to you. Cool. Um, so uh, if you get it right. So you have to come up with the name of the chip. All right. You want to give any hints as to like any nope. physical attributes? Nope. Just directly wow. behind the video port. So, you know, go to your flea market, grab yourself an Apple IIc. And or if you've got one laying around in the house, I don't, I, don't want, I, don't, we, I don't want a model number. I don't want a serial number off the chip. I want the name of the chip. All right. The, the, as, it, as it were. As it were. All right. Sounds good. And, of course, you can submit your answer to trivia at hack5.org. We'd love to hear uh, what you think about that. And, of course, trivia is brought to you by our friends over at GoDaddy. Uh, we have a cool thing going on with GoDaddy.com right now, and that is not only can you get awesome domain names with 10% off using the coupon code JHAK, but uh, you can also get SSL certificates uh, for 10% off. They start at $29.99 a year, which is phenomenal. Trust me, I bought three of them yeah. with, uh, with the coupon code. Yeah. And... Uh, it, it, it's it's painless. You, yeah. you, I mean, if the twenty nine dollars certificate, you sign up and you've got your certificate ready in like five minutes. It's like that. I mean, if you've ever dealt with any of the other people on, on getting SSLs, it's a little bit difficult. Yeah. You got to have the DMB numbers or faxing in the whatever. It, it makes it really simple. And to all those people that are like, you guys are dream host shills. I'm just telling you to go to GoDaddy on this one because yeah, I've definitely. been everywhere else and, and nobody's got a better price. So save yourself some money on the SSL cert to keep your login secure. And uh, you can get that at GoDaddy.com. Coupon code HAK. And I totally went off script on that, but whatever, because it works. Yeah. So let's go check out some snacky snackies. Mmm, yummy. Snacky, snacky. Have you ever had that issue where you're trying to copy some stuff from one place to another, and then there's that one file that's like, I don't know, in use, or Windows thinks it's doing something, and it just fails the entire copy because of that one file? How ridiculous. Don't you wish you could just like, oh, ignore that, I'll get back to it later, right? Or maybe you're just trying to do some recovery, and you need it to like try a few times. Well, Windows Explorer file copy is the suck, so definitely check out Roadkill's Unstoppable Copier. This thing is freaking sweet. You go under settings and you have like a plethora of different options here for the ways that you want to keep attributes or the ownership, the time date stamp, you know, damaged files, whether you want to skip them, retry them, whatever. Uh, you can pick this up at roadkill.net. It's free, it's for win Windows and Linux, so you're not left out in the cold, and it has saved my butt just a few times when it comes to those servers that are, are busy with some files. Anyway, check it out, and for more tips like these, hack5.org slash forms. All right, so Chris Gerling is here to help us system administrators who may have forgotten something when we actually set up our security in our networks and uh, may have become, quote unquote, compromised. Uh, he's here to show us off uh, Helix 3, uh, both the Windows and the uh, Linux components. Chris, uh, what do we got for today? Okay. Um, I've been on uh, incident response teams before, and uh, basically we have this uh, open source distribution. It's based on no Nopix, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a collection of tools that allow you to do forensic investigation and collection in the event that you have a system that was compromised. Um, so I'm going to go into the Windows part first. There's Windows and, and Linux. You can boot it up into Linux, or you can put it right into your Windows computer. Now, as and far as this Windows component is concerned, what is the purpose of the Windows component? You know, when would we actually use this? Um, you know, when okay. Um, the purpose of the Windows uh, part of it is before you shut the machine down that you think has been compromised, um, most malware, malicious code and things like that, it has built-in detection capabilities. So if you do certain things in the machine, it will try to cover its tracks. So if you issue the shutdown command, it will know that you're trying to do that and start clearing out event logs and things like that, trying to kind of erase the damage it's done to an extent so that okay. when you make the... When the forensic investigator goes in there, he's you know a little stymied. Um, so you would put the Windows side in first. Obviously, it would have to be a, a Windows server, um, which you'll find that a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, it allows you, for the most part, you use it to capture what's in memory running. So the, the virus is running in memory, and you capture it. And that way, when you shut this machine down, of course, you lose everything that's in RAM. Right. So this is important for your first step to collect any anything that might be running. And then your second step would be go to, to go to the Linux side to actually image of the hard drive. Okay, so, we, so we've, we've gone to the point of, oh my god, I think I've been hacked, uh, and now we're going to proceed to collect information on what happened, mm -hmm. 
and and process it and so okay. so let's go through that all right so when you when you pop your cd and you're going to come up with this uh there's an ex there's a license agreement you accept and then you come up with the helix uh window right here and there's all there's these different tabs in here uh system information acquire the live image using uh, dd which is a linux tool um, for copying hard drives uh, and incident response tools this is where we have our ram collection and there's some documents uh, where you can go in and I uh, have to click on it and it'll power up. There we go. So you, it has different forms and, and manuals and things like that. And there, the rest of the options just have different things like image searching and, and things like that. Okay. Um, so what we want to go to is when we want to collect our actual uh, RAM and everything, we're going to go to the Windsic, Windows Forensic Tool Chest. Okay. And we're going to uh, run that. And I'm just going to select, uh, I just made a Helix folder here. Okay. And uh, actually, I'm going to make a new folder because I did make a... Uh, I did this once already. So everything that I dump is going to go into this folder. Okay. And there's some there's some options you can set. Uh, there's different tools that they run, different special tools that take a long. Some of them take a longer time to run than others, and some of the stuff you don't need. Okay. Um, I'm not going to run the special tools because they just take too long. Um, but there's they collect different types of information. Like this one collects MAC addresses and things like that. Sniffs traffic, anything that the virus might be doing. Okay. So I'm going to click no to that. You would just type in a case number if you had one, um, your name. So I'm going to do my name. Um, you're about to run, and now it tells you what the command is that you're running. Okay. And then you say, is this okay? Yes. And then it'll bring up an actual uh, command window, and it's running this Windows Forensic Tool Chest. So here, uh, you're running Interact. So then you just go through a bunch of other prompts. Mm -hmm. And I just, you just def most of the time, you'll just default to pretty much everything. Okay. And then uh, default path, okay. And then uh, for this one, I'm just going to do the C drive. Okay. And uh, since I already put that in, Chris, so we're just going to go through these prompts. Um, you can actually hash the data so you can verify it so that it, it actually did it correctly. MD5, uh, SHA-1. Okay. Uh, I just use default MD5. Uh, and do you want to run the tools that are slow? We're not going to do that here. Um, now, in real-world cases, you would actually click yes to all right. these different tools because you want as much information as you can get. Um, and you do not want to run tools that can write to the source system unless you really know what you're doing and you really understand exactly how the system is built because this is meant to not touch the right. hard drive and things like that. So you To not have an impact on what you're actually mm -hmm. collecting. So you don't corrupt your Correct. evidence. Okay. So I'm going to go to no. And we want to use, I'm going to do HTML reporting because it's a little easier to read and no prompting, so it'll just run. And then uh, do you want to automatically open the complete report? Uh, actually, I'm going to do no, because I don't have uh, HTML files tied to my browser. And is that OK? Yes. And it'll run. And okay. it doesn't really take that long. Um, it'll go through, and there's a, I think there's a, it says there's 139 different executables that it's running. Okay. And it'll run through them fairly quickly. It might take about a minute or so. Um, and while it's doing that, uh, I'm going to go over to the Linux side a little bit. Um, I think I can just yank this and put it over here. Um, is that all right, Paul? Okay. So we'll just, because it takes about two or three minutes to run. All right. So now on the Linux side, this is what you would go into after you've already done the Windows side. Which we're doing right now. Yep, we're, we're letting that run. And then uh, you would go into the Linux side, and this is primarily used for imaging the actual hard drive. So you can make a, a copy of it bit for bit, mm -hmm. and then you can give it to your forensic analyst, and he can do whatever he wants to it, load it up, you know, run everything, and that way you don't have to worry about compromising the original hard drive. Because right. that, that goes in a bag, stays And never court. gets touched again. The only time it comes out is in court. Yep. So here, we'll go in, and there's a bunch of different tools, uh, incident response, but we're concerned about there's forensics tools. Okay. There's different things in here, X editors, but we're not going to go into those. Mm -hmm. um, the first one is Adepto, and there's there's two or three different tools on here that do the same thing. I'm just using this one because it's a little easier to, to see what we're doing. Okay. So I already had a case created on here, and I have an external hard drive because um, most of the time you're gonna you want something where you can push this image to. And, you right. Know, you know, if it, this machine example is uh, for example is 30 gigs. Okay. So I have an 80 gig drive. Um, so we're going to uh, we're going to click Go on here, and it'll bring up uh, all your devices, HDA, SDA. So I'm going to click uh, HDA, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to go to uh, Acquire. And then 
on here, it pulls up, here's my device name. Okay. And on my uh, mount point, all right, actually it didn't show up in there. Oh, it didn't, it didn't actually show up before. It'll, it'll show up though. So I'm gonna go from HDA to SDA. And uh, I'm gonna leave everything default. You can select different types of options. We're just gonna use DCFLDD, which is a, it's a, just a more advanced version of DD. Okay. That's all it is. Um, MD5, it's kind of similar to the stuff we were running over here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm gonna click start. And it'll automatically uh, acquire the drive. Now this one, there's nothing on either of these drives, so it's gonna go pretty quick. Okay. And I think it's, well actually this Verify failed. Um, I think I already had copied it once and it won't, it's not going to copy over itself again. Okay. So, but it, the, since there's no data, it doesn't really matter. Right. But you would just click start and it'll copy bit for bit everything that's on that hard drive and put it on the external drive. So, and then the other tool that we use is uh, for, X, for NCASE, which is the accepted um, uh, forensics investigation software in court. Okay. It's been tried and tested. And there's different file formats. So with DD, you just get a straight up Linux DD, you know, image. Mm -hmm. um, with Linen, you can actually make an NCase file so that it'll open natively in NCase. NCase won't open DD files natively. Okay. Um, at least on the versions we have. Mm -hmm. So uh, on here, we just click acquire, and it lists all your disks, and we choose HDA, and we're gonna do. Uh, slash dev sda1 and i'm just going to actually i'm just going to put it default in there you would create your own folder structure based on the case you know right uh, information that you wanted we don't have an alternate path same thing as in the other one case number and uh, it doesn't with this stuff doesn't really matter right now and we're not going to use compression it takes a while i'm not going to generate a hash on this you obviously want to right uh, no password and usually you want to make uh, the max uh, file size so you can transfer it easier. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it'll go through. Oh, it's too small. I guess there's stuff on there already. I did this once before, and I think because I had copied it over already, I ran out of room. Oh. So let's go back over to the Windows side, because I think it's, uh, it's almost done. It's hashing right now. Um, but that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, I will actually switch over real quick. So basically, the process flows, oh God, I think I've been hacked, mm -hmm. something of the sort. I'm gonna go through, copy uh, you know, what's running on you know, my mission critical server, whether it be you know, your exchange server, whether it be you know, a SQL server, or something else like that. Acquire the, the information, call the authorities, or whoever if you've got you know in your you've got your in team exactly for and then let them take it from mm -hmm. there yep. and that will allow you to a cover your ass and b assist the, the guys who are going to be mm -hmm. and possibly you know, looking at you know what's going on mm -hmm. okay and possibly put the guy who did it behind bars so at a, if at um, all possible if at all possible so i guess the hashing on this is going to take a little while okay um but we don't need to see the ending of that so um and obviously this this is a very quick the the actual process of doing this takes hours and you would do, you have to write everything down yeah. document everything uh, and they give you a lot of good uh, i think i showed this before it actually gives you a chain of custody form. I don't have uh, Adobe installed on this laptop, but it, it gives you all the forms that you might need. Now, you might even have your own mm -hmm. you know, in-house team and everything. So. Okay. But that's, uh, that's Helix. All so. right. Well, thanks, Chris. And uh, if you guys need uh, forensic help, I'm sure Chris will have some, uh, some links in the show notes uh, later yeah. on and whatever we've already cut and not taping it. <laughs> <laughs>
And there you go. For more tips like this, check out the forums at hack5.org. All right, so that just about wraps up this episode of Hack 5. Or at least that's how it's usually done. Yeah. So trust your technologists. Good night. See ya. All right, so that about wraps up this episode of Hack 5. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, but before we get out of here, we've got some bills to pay, and one of those bills being DreamHost. It definitely. I've been with them since 2005. Uh, I actually recently recovered my uh, WordPress blog, my 1.1 blog over there, that I used a one-click install to get going back in the day, and uh, it's back and going and a lot of fun. So uh, DreamHost.com is where you can get yourself, you know, your nice little web hosting with, you know, just gigs and gigs and terabytes and terabytes. They got 500 gigs worth of storage. They got five terabytes worth of monthly transfer. A lot of one-click installs, as Darren was just saying, so it's really easy to set up a blog, a forum, whatever you guys want to do. Six, bu six bucks a month, you can't go wrong. And if you sign up using coupon code HAK, the number five, you get $25 off your order. So saving you some dough, keeping us on the air. Can't beat that. Uh, guys, remember that next episode, Season 3, Episode 10, is the last episode for the season before we take a couple month break. We've got some great things planned for Season 4. Got to always you know, make sure that we like say this every end of season. Yeah. End of season, not series. <laughs> Tune in on we'll May 5th. We'll be back. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah, May 5th it ends. August 5th it comes back. The rest of the time we recover. Right, exactly. Or so other projects. Next episode is last episode for the season, not the series. Of course, with the thrilling cliffhanger, because you know that whole plot thing that's been yeah. forgotten about. <laughs> Damn, writers went on strike and we never got anything done. I tell you. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, the last thing is check the website. We're going to be working on some new swag for you guys. I'd like to get your opinions on those. And guys, remember, don't whine. Don't moan. Don't yell. But Just trust, trust your, your techno, techno lust. <laughs>
too. Me too. Oh my god. All right. Well, uh, okay. Hold on. I was saying. Um, uh, okay. And uh, the, the swag and a forum and or check out the swag. And no, no, uh, hang on. Uh, hold on. Oh. I got. It, I got. It, I got it. And uh, Darren, I guess we should get. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we should get, 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 get,